Hey guys, welcome to a really, really exciting episode of Coveter's Corner. You know, uh, you loyal viewers, yeah, you disloyal viewers, not so much. But in Coveter's Corner, we take a look at guitars, uh, people have things that they're making, ideas that they have, or even intellectual property. Yeah, like, like these bibs, like the matchbook of the episode full cup and heard them bib overalls um, I want you to know that they're Sanforized not Fred Sanford but Sanforized uh, waistline bib overalls yeah matchbook of the episode while we're doing this <laughs> housekeeping give me a like you know you're gonna like this don't litter up your uh, intellectual property if you have some with worrying about liking me later just give me that like now and don't forget to um, check out the shout outs I have I want to tell you about I went down to San Diego this week to see uh, a documentary film that had cameos of a couple of my guitars in it and I'll cover that in an episode but M Theory M Theory my friend Michael at M Theory Records in San Diego good uh, selection good blues selection and it's just not the top 40 type stuff he's got good depth and catalog he's got good stuff there that if you really want to pay for it, it's in good shape but the best part about it is at m theory you can expect deeper parts of a artist catalog at a reasonable price and in good shape and dude talk about a trucker hat yeah m theory thanks michael so we're going to jump right into this by meeting the person that sold me this guitar we're going to be talking about. It's an airline guitar. Um, it is, well, we'll get to that afterwards, but um, I had a dilemma with this guitar because I'm looking at something that I can't mess up like I always do with this scrap apparatus on here. Anyway, let's meet Hector and have him tell us about the guitar I got have got yeah g-o-t that's right let's go uh, my name is hector i met ken over i guess through the internet uh he's looking for a guitar and i happen to have one i've had it for a while it's a very classic old guitar i cleaned it all up held on to it hoping to play it and all such like that but um i just don't have what it takes to play that type of guitar so anyway, it does have a bit of a history. Uh, I got it from one of my friends. He gave it to me to give to my son. Uh, my son plays guitar and all that such things, uh, bass, uh, acoustics, electrics, anything he gets his hands on. He's uh, pretty much a jazz guy, but uh, he plays anything and everything. So his guitar was intended for him from my friend, which came from his family as an heirloom thing. He's done passed away since a while now. But me holding on to it does me no good, but it will do somebody else some good. So I came across Ken. Ken does some fabulous stuff with his things, with his guitars and whatever he has. Uh, this is the guitar here. It's a uh, airline, vintage. Um, hopefully he'll get something out of this. It's a gorgeous guitar. This is the original case. fully electric and dusty but it's a very nice guitar it's from the early 50s to mid 50s I guess uh, there's a few of them before a few of them after with a few little differences but for the most part it's they're all the same um, this is an airline it used to come with the um, original amp and the uh, strap the case they originally were for sale. They were selling them from Montgomery Wars as a package deal for kids or something of that sort, entry level. But um, my partner had it because his family wanted it. They had it ever since stored. Um, they left it tuned and stored it that way, so it got a little bit of a warped neck. We kind of straightened it out as much as we can. But there you go, and this is, this is the beauty that it is.
and here it is. It's in my possession. Ooh, ah. Uh. Hey, you know what? Coveting does not generally mean drooling. So go wash your face, and we're going to try to uh, absolve you of your covetous sins by hearing Hector's answer to the probably the only emotional uh, significant, emotionally significant question I will ask that seems to indicate that I might actually care about other human beings. I usually ask one of those questions a year and this is it. And I asked Hector before I took this off of his hands, what does music mean to you? Get ready for profound, son. You ain't going to need no onion this time. Get the Kleenexes. This is real. Ken asked me, what do I think about music? Um, well, it's a great thing. Um, didn't know too much about it. It was in my family forever. I never played. Parents played, but I don't know if they actually knew music. But then it uh, went on to my kids, and my kids learned it. They played piano. Um, the boy, my son, takes, he's, he's a guitar guy. Um, he had it all since elementary school and to high school and college, and he's still doing music. Um, not for a band or that, but only for himself. He's a video audio guy. But during the high school years, um, when I was with him as a booster parent, we pushed kids to do whatever they can to get instruments, to get uh, some backup, to help them for these competitions, and, and kind of fight for them. You know, kids don't have much of a voice. But either way, we were managed to get them equipment to make them look a little more professional. And they themselves felt better. Their music sounded much nicer. And they were really into the music. Um, in time, we won competitions. We won things. Then I started helping more. And I got more involved. And I started building props to get, put ourselves in a higher level so the kids can really get out there and do their thing. And... Um, we actually won a couple of gold medals in the, uh, in her, what is it, in 2014-15 area around there. I built a huge, uh, gigantic jack-in-the-box, all electronics and everything else, remote control. I controlled it from the audience and the kids were playing with it in the field. And we built that just out of scraps, and cause that's all the money we had for the school. Then we raised more money to build other props and they hit pretty good. They were very nice. And in the process, I taught kids, band kids, how to do other than just music. They learned how to run Cat5 uh, wiring for their computers, taught them how to weld for the frames for this equipment we were working with. We did, these kids just did everything. I helped a few kids. I have three Eagle Scout uh, badges that I got from, their, from these students for helping them do projects for the band, which they, of course, they loved. Um, but it was... Uh, Quite an experience for this band to get up above and, and going. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's great. Music is fantastic. And they say that they, it, it, uh, it helps with their stress and everything else. My kids come here every so often and play this piano and guitars. I have uh, violins. I have uh, cellos. I have a few things that whatever they want to play with, is, and they get on it and they try to learn it. They YouTube it, whatever they got to do. And they do it. And it's great. And they're not afraid. And the boy, my son, he's a the musician guy, but he plays uh, saxophone, and he's played all the saxes before. He plays uh, bass guitar now, acoustic guitars. This thing he's played a couple times on a few videos of his. I'm not sure where they're at. I haven't seen them. But um, we have a few t guitars that come and gone, but this one stuck around for a long time because my friend gave me this one. But it's, uh, he gets into it. He loves it. And music has kept him pretty pretty a peaceful person and it's no stress they come they relieve their stress by playing piano and it turns out really nice so there you go all in a nutshell that's what music's all about oh, oh my gosh wow that was touching hey, don't worry about that this was real it was real I swear I was uh, it was real. Okay, guys, let's start off with a confession here. Um, I know you're not a priest. If you are, sorry, Father. Uh, yeah, I've been missing church a lot lately. I'll work on that. But anyway, I hit a wall in this 
episode that I have not hit before. It's a different wall than when you're uh, making your 357th video about how to do something with a cigar box. This was like, I think that I've uh, broken or uh, I'm about to break through an area that is like significant. So what does that mean? Well, you know that I will take just about anything and make a guitar out of it. Um, this one here, this three string, I'm going to give you a link right up. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Right about there, right about now of Reverend Peyton playing the twin to this guitar right here. So I will make guitars out of just about anything. I will also recently dive into empty swimming pools where you got cracks, you got neck broke off, you got, so nothing really scares me um, anymore, but a nice guitar, that scares me a lot. Okay, the first arch top I ever bought, I bought it about three or four years ago out of Arkansas on eBay. I didn't know anything about these things. I didn't know the stuff that I was telling you about in Buyer's Guide to Cheap Arch Tops, right up there, right about now. Anyway, this was it. It didn't come all dressed up with the junk, with the pickup, with the license plate, with the holes in it, and certainly not with the Bob Log, the third signature. Did I ever tell you that there's a video of Bob Log playing this guitar right about there, right about now? You're going to want to check that out. Anyway, since then, I have gotten more creative. And I will do just about anything to these guitars. Matchbook in the neck. You're seeing the same kind of stuff you saw carried through my cigar box guitars. But, yeah, I make them unique because I want you to think about the condition that I get some of these in. Restoring them back is impractical. You'll never get... Uh, where you need to be and they'll never really be worth anything especially if you start off with something like this but this guitar is very different than the guitar I got from Hector so all of a sudden it hit me I can't do my usual box of tricks with this guitar because it will virtually ruin the value of it. So then I'm faced to look at what about this guitar makes it worth the very top end, which might be, I don't know, $800? And a couple hundred dollars, which is where I usually start off with one like this, or even half that on one like the California Junk Pile, which there is a playlist on everything that was done to this one right about here, right about now. Anyway, let's take Hector's airline to the bench and take a closer look at what it is and what it is not. Okay, this guitar is very pretty, but so is your 14th cousin at the family reunion if you've had enough beers. Yeah, I went there. Not, not literally, but you know, figuratively. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. If you do, you need to get some help. But anyway, trust me. No, don't. Anyway, it came with the original case and the original white strap. Look at that. Um, the case is in pretty good shape. It's got this fuzzy stuff on the inside that some of it comes off as dust. And you can see that up on the top of the guitar. But this actually also came with the original amp, which somebody else got to before me. So near as I can tell, it was made in 1958, and it is the airline version of the K6550 Pacer, which is known for these speed bump pickups. You see why they're called speed bumps? Anyway, um, everything is great on this guitar, um, it's not tore up, it's not beat up, it seems to have most of its original parts, but 
these pickups are what came on the K Speed Demon and everybody wants these pickups. So sometimes what happened, I'm just going to keep going up and down here. Um, it's got good binding, even the neck has binding. You'll notice that the fret markers right here uh, and they don't end halfway into the binding there. Uh, and there's some good craftsmanship. The tuners leave a little bit to de be desired, really, because there's not escutcheons there. I don't see, or holders on the top side, I don't see evidence that somebody took them off or whatever. But the fact that these guitars have survived, or this guitar has survived, without somebody robbing these pickups out of it and giving it back, and then I do something like this with it, is incredible. Let's lay it down on the bench. All right, when I go out looking for a guitar, I've got this with me. It's got knot files. It's got this handy wrench that lets you um, get inside of, um, like to find out if knots are loose or things like that under your pots and, and even your um, tuner pegs. Um, a screwdriver, I got a nice file here. Um, but one of the most important things I have is this light here that lets me look down in the F holes and see what's going on. But I have this pick, this 1.5 millimeter. Yeah, I love you too, metric hater. Um, this pick, because my friend Rob at Guitar 48 in Ventura showed me a little trick. And that is, if you get buzzed because the nut is not adjusted right, um, you can take this pick like so and put it in here. And if it fits under here and just barely touches, that nut is okay. So I can take this and strum this a little bit. And it deadens out the strings. Um, if it's way up high, then when I start fretting here, it's going to be hard to play up here. And it's going to give me some odd noises. So this is very handy. But we can tell that right here, I could file that down a little bit. The good part about these... I don't want to give anybody a shout out if nobody has the money to uh, buy from them. But these knot files are irreplaceable because they have, if I'm going to run a 56 for my big string, this is a 56. I can come in here and loosen up the string. I can actually pull it off to the side uh, with something and pry it up and pop it over and give this what it needs just a little bit and then use this as a means of getting it in place. So always look at the nut first. Nut on this thing needs a little bit of work right here. Most of them are okay. Okay moving down the fingerboard here. Um, I always talk to you about when there's binding here sometimes the binding comes up and covers the end of the fret. So if the guitar is sitting in a closet and it expands and contracts these frets will actually move out. They don't grow or, or uh, increase or decrease in size, but the wood sucking in and out does. And if that happens and this fret is underneath here, it will start to crack the binding. Always look for that. These binding jobs are a nightmare when you do your first one. I've done a binding job that turned out pretty good. Um, I'll give you an episode to it right up there, right about now, a link. Uh, check that out, but I put a binding on an old Archcraft by K 30s model. Anyway, we come down, everything looks okay, um, but there's a little action problem. When we turn this over, you can see that the action, let me get it in the camera, the action there is really high, really high. And then if you go down here to the bridge, that bridge isn't jumping up and down very high. I think there's already been some work done on it. Now, let's say that I take and measure with my little slide measuring device, and I figure out I want to have four millimeters there. I can figure out, can I take four millimeters off of this by shaving it down and then sanding it uh, on top to fit this so we don't start cracking anything and I can just basically take this and figure out lay it there or two of them figure out is there enough here 
to bring this bridge down to the point where it will cure this action problem. Now, why is there an action problem? Okay, you heard Hector say that someone had this strung up under tension, meaning it was tuned, they put it away in a case and forgot about it. Um, you'll notice that this does not have a truss rod cover. Let me zoom in. There's no truss rod cover there. So it does not have a truss rod. It doesn't have a sticker that says a reinforced neck. Um, and again, those escutcheons missing up on those tuning machines on top say that this is not Gibson level quality. It does have good tuners on it and they work good. But anyway, this neck bowed is what happened. Uh, if you look down at it, it bows up in the area of the 12th fret, which means uh, action's pretty good here, but it gets higher as it goes. That leaves us having to work with this. I can do that, but this is not top, top price guitar material. For what I paid for it, considering where it started, um, yeah, um, I'm okay with this, but Let's look at a couple other little things before we close this part out. Okay, I'm going to point out this area right here and right here. Seems to be a little checking. That, what appears to be the beginning of a crack, is about 10 millimeters. And this one here is a little bit pronounced, more pronounced. But when I look at it and I take my finger over it, there's just the slightest raise there, slightest raise. I took a camera and put it inside the F-hole and a mirror and a light, which this light, again, is the best thing you can have. And there's no evidence that this is a crack going through the body. Now, what I can do is I can take some very fine sandpaper. I can mask this off. And I don't know if I have a card left or not, but I talked about fixing cracks in an arch top body. I'll give you a link up there. I only get five of these cards so if it's not there just look at uh, the fake luthier cracks in an arch top body. Anyway we just take some tape. Low tack tape is best. This white stuff will not take your finish off and you just put it on there like that and then you're going to take some hide glue that's heated up and you're going to suction cup it in this way. Remember, we don't pick it up and down. We start out here and push it in. Once that's done, I leave this tape on here and I can take some very fine grade sandpaper or a sandpaper pad and take care of those um, and not do too much with the finish there to blemish it. These phosphor coated strings on here, I'm going to take those off. Um, they don't sound well with these pickups for sure. And um, I'm going to switch over to a little bit lighter set of strings. I'm going to go with my old standby um, a 46 top string. I buy these seven string packs so I can decide whether I want to use 13s or 10s. I really don't want to get up into the 50s on the top end. Remember, if this neck breaks loose, I have just ruined the value of this guitar. Then I start stripping it for parts and pulling off um, all this kind of stuff and salvaging these pickups and stuff. And then it goes into this kind of world. And we, we want to avoid that. I didn't buy this guitar for that to happen. So we're going to put a little bit of lighter strings. And I also want to remind you that the more angle there is on your bridge, the higher up it is, like so. When I start pulling millimeters off of this, like so, and taking it down, the more direct pull there is off the tooting machines and onto this, and that means more pressure right there. Again, you don't want the necks cutting loose on these things and then bolting them, $400 neck reset into this. There's no way I can ask somebody for $1,000 when you can get into a tour up from the floor up Gibson that functions really well and looks like this for that kind of money. The difference between this and this is a bolt and a knack and hundreds of dollars of value or bills. 
last thing uh, the switch is backwards from what most people uh, like it to be which means it's been off the guitar somebody probably checked it out remember I can use this handy tool and I can hold um, this and loosen this up and then just basically spin the thing again if I want to put a mirror in here and a light to make sure that whenever you're turning this stuff there's always the possibility when you're winding up the wires inside that you'll pop off a solder connection you don't really want to do that finally one of these tone controls does not work um, it is going to need some work and um, but the volume and everything else and the switch between the pickup works the sound coming out of these is magnificent um, and it will even be better when I take this action down a couple millimeters. So this is a great guitar. Got a couple little issues. Um, it would have been great had somebody not left it uh, where the neck bowed up a little bit. But if I start thinking about um, leveling the neck, that means I have to refret all of this stuff. And you, again, this is just like the classic neck problem on a cheap guitar. Are you going to put three or four hundred dollars into something that might be? I think the top end on this guitar is somewhere around eight hundred. Um, if it's you got a few little things done to it and somebody really takes care of it, but the wall I'm hitting is this. I cannot take this guitar and turn it into this guitar um, and feel good about it. So, moral of the story, the wall I hit is the realization that even if I start buying the upper end arch tops, I'm getting into the demanding world of being a real luthier and this is probably the most I've paid for a used arch top. And it is at the very bottom of the scale when it comes to very desirable arch tops, especially when you're talking about Gibsons. I appreciate uh, Hector giving me a good price on this, being really honest with the issues it has. Um, and I very much appreciate him sharing his story with us. All right. I am kind of in a quandary now because I'm not going to be able to do what I usually do with this guitar. Um, and the lesson here is, even when you're buying this top end K stuff, you're still at the bottom end of guitar, so don't forget that. Um, there's a lot, a lot of little things that can make the top value of something like this go down very quickly. Don't forget that. So. Let's close this up by reminding you, if you're down in San Diego, you want to go to M Theory Records, uh, you're going to be glad you did. Um, if you are looking at a record and you're starting to feel like that's something what Ken would want, yeah, put it down, leave the store. Other than that, they got a lot of Depeche Mode and stuff that, you know, you might like. But the good stuff, that's for me. That's definitely for me. Now, let's do what we always do and take this thing out to see my friend Frank and see what Frank can do with it.
Is that better? Okay, cut, cut. We'll, we'll, we'll do that again. Uh, onion crying, take two. Acton, 